Hey, welcome back to another application tutorial for our Jokes app. We're in the security section where we're trying to break our application and then fix it. So in the last video, we worked with the login screen. So I entered a username and password and clicked login. At that point, we were left with a unfound or not found message that says uh, you need to develop this process login page. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's return to the uh, application code here in the uh, editor. And I'm going into the search keyword form. This is going to be important because it is the basis of searching the database and presenting uh, data on the screen. So I'm going to start by copying all of this code here and then bringing it into a new file. So let's create a new file and I'm going to call it process uh, login. Dot, uh, let's see, I was going to name it unsecure.php. And then we'll go ahead and paste that in here. So a couple of things that I'm going to start with is get rid of all of the extra formatting at the top of the page. So we don't really care if this is pretty or not. All right, so the first thing I need to do is capture the username and then capture the password. So let's assign a variable for each of those. And then I'm going to repeat these uh, back to the screen. So it says you've attempted to log in with a username and password. So obviously this is going to be f showing the username and the password on the screen. Not a good idea, but it will let us help uh, figure out um, what's going on in the, uh, in the code here. Next I'm going to Google and I'm going to search for a string here called show errors PHP. So this is a pretty useful thing as we code. I want to show the errors on the web browser and not just some error log. So this obviously is a good answer from Stack Overflow. It's been answered, uh, voted up over 1500 times. So I'm simply gonna copy this. So I'm going to paste it at the top of the screen here, right before anything else. All this does is it shows the errors in case there's some kind of a runtime issue. That helps with uh, troubleshooting a lot of the code. All right, so the next line down, it's about uh, showing jokes with the word keyword. I can delete that. We are now going to jump directly into the database. So when I log in, I want to check to see if any user and password match with what's in the tables. So let's uh, delete what's here and modify it a bit. So the SQL select statement that we're going to use is going to select the username and password from the users table. And I want them both to match. So username equals dollar sign username and password equals password. So inside of the uh, SQL statement, I have forgotten to put quotation marks anytime that you talk about an actual value. And so that will prevent an error. Now we're going to go to the next results and find, uh, we're gonna do the query and we'll check to see if there are any number of rows. All right, so the next part is to check to see if there are any results. So after running the query, we'll check to see if the number of rows that are returned from the database is greater than zero. So if there are zero rows, that means there are nobody with that name and password. Then we're going to fetch one row. So in previous examples, we were using a while loop because we wanted to get many different jokes from the jokes table. In this case, we only want to get the first result. So we're going to say row equals the result arrow fetch association. And so fetch associated gives us um, an array. The user ID variable is going to be taken from the ID value of the row. And then we'll present a uh, login success message and then we will close the uh, page. However, if it is not found, we will say zero results and nobody found with that username and password. There's more to do, but that will get us started here. So now I'm going to return to the login page and I'm going to click login. All right, so I have this undefined index error. It says on line 20. So it's nice to have these error messages print to your browser. Or you can do troubleshooting. Let's go see what I did on line 20. So it says here, row was, uh, there's no, there's nothing called ID in the row. Hmm. Let's go look at the database and see what I had actually put in there. So the users table, and let's browse the database. 
We're looking for ID. Hmm. Okay, so ID didn't show up. That's because in my select statement, I didn't put the word ID in there. So let's put in ID, username, password. So now it's actually going to select that. Let's try that again. Save it. And let's come back here and refresh the page. It says login successful. So it did say that it found a match. Let's back up and I'm gonna put in a fake username and let's put in ASDF and see what happens. It says ASDF and password did not work and so zero results. All right, so the code seems to be able to identify whether or not there is a proper username and password match. I'm going to introduce a new subject called session variables. And those are useful to store um, a status throughout the session of a user's experience. For instance, if the, if the person successfully logs in, we want to keep track of that so that every page can be uh, knowledgeable about who the user is. So the, the way that we work with that is we start at the very beginning of the code on PHP. And you always have to start with session start. So session start means that on this page, session variables will be used. Now, once we have a successful login, we're going to do some session setting. So I'm gonna use the variable called under, uh, dollar sign underscore session. And then you're allowed to use any kind of a association here, any kind of item in the session variable. For instance, we're gonna say username is going to be equal to whatever the username was provided for us. I'd also like to have another session variable. So I'm gonna put in here the user ID, and that is going to be equal to whichever user ID was provided in the, uh, from the database. Now, if there is no results found, we want to not set those session variables. So I'm gonna say that the session variable is going to be equal to an empty array. And then I'm going to destroy the session. So it's called session underscore destroy. And that will eliminate any issues of having a current login. Okay, finally I'm going to put another message on the screen with a link that says, if you are not logged in, then we'll return to the main page. All right, so these last few lines that I'm going to insert now are going to print the session variable. This will just let us know who's logged in. It's just for testing purposes. So I'm going to use something called pre. It's a, it's a tag that allows you to print computer code. And in this case, it's an array. Print R will print the session variable for us and then the close tag for pre. So let's, uh, let's see what that formatting looks like here. So I'm gonna go back and run the page. So let's refresh this page. It logs in and as you can see now, the session variable is printed as a username, as shad and user ID. This doesn't look good, I spelled username wrong. So let's come back and fix this. So where was this? User name and session was also spelled wrong. Okay, refresh once more, and there it is. Username, whoa, it's, it's left over from the beginning, so that is not good. Let's, uh, let's, let's log in as a fake user, and it sh now shows the session variable is empty, and let's log in again as a real user, and now it's set again. So username and password are set. So these session variables are going to be used now on other pages, and so we'll do that in the next video.